continue to read James chapter 3. T uh, taming the tongue. Ooh, this is really good. Take note, take note, take note, because this is really good even for today. Like, this is... Uh, the book of James has got a lot of information as of even today. It's almost written as in, whenever I read the book of James, I always read it like it is, he's talking directly at us, like modern day, today. So, Taming the Tongue. Um, uh, James chapter 3, Taming the Tongue. Uh, not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly we all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set... Uh, consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark the tongue also is a fire a world of evil among the parts of the body it corrupts the whole person sets the whole course of his life on fire and in it and is itself set on fire by hell all kinds of animals birds reptiles and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man but no man can tame the tongue it is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Okay, so there's a lot here. Multiple points, sermon upon sermon. Um, one of them is a point that I talked about previously, in particular when it comes to leadership, when it comes to preachers, pastors, people who are leading a flock, teachers. This It says it right here. It says, Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. It isn't necessarily that the Lord's... The Lord already has... He already lets you know what's sin and what's not sin. We all learn and know that through our lives. Being a teacher, you also are judged by people even though the Lord, our God, is the judge, you're also judged because your people are hearing, not only hearing you, but you're, they're seeing the actions. They're seeing our actions. They're seeing how we talk, how we live, how we act. Is it according to the word, or are we just going in every uh, time where there's a, a get-together, whether it be Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever day of the week, is it just someone performing work, as in work on the earthly level? They're doing something that creates results to be paid. Or are you doing something on a spiritual level? You're, you're doing something to, as in when Jesus told his disciples, you know, Feed my lambs. Are you doing something in the spirit that's giving them something for eternity? And be doing something knowing that you will be rewarded in eternity. Not something that you're looking for here on earth. Recognition, uh, thanks, etc. You know, and that is something that you are thanked. Okay. Uh, you can accept the thank, but the... The thankfulness is accepting of God who is giving that gift of the Holy Spirit to lead a flock to and God and say, you know what? I thank you for thanking me, but thank the Lord God Almighty for he has blessed you with uh, with revelation, with wisdom, with healing, whatever it may be. And so understand that. On, um, before I go on to point two, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? We'll read over this. How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? 